Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we have another retro console. Uh, this one is called Low Res NX, and the way a retro console works is it's trying to give you uh, kind of an old school programming experience. It gives you very stripped down hardware and all the tools you need to create a game. In some ways, it harkens back to the way it used to be during the age of 8-bit micros, where you used to bring your computer home, load up the basic interpreter, and basically start creating a game. And there's a good part of the reason why this game channel is called Game From Scratch. The, the age of creating games from scratch are gone. Now you use a framework or a library or a game engine to create your games, and that takes a little bit of the purity or the fun out of it, especially when you're just starting out and you want to learn things. The less complexity, the better. And that's the entire idea behind the basic programming language in the first place. And that is the lingua franca of the low-res NX uh, retro game console. So this one is uh, completely free, completely open source. We'll see all of that in just a second. It is available at lowresnx.inutilis.com. I will, of course, link that in the linked article down below. Um, and the cool thing here is you can actually download it for the App Store. We'll see that in just a second. It's also available for Mac, Windows, and Linux. So all your major platforms are covered. Now, this is a very constrained platform. We'll see the details of that in just a second. But the whole idea is it's old school style programming. It provides the tools you need and a website where you can share your works. Um, you're not going to create the next, you know, big thing out of this, but you may kind of come to appreciate game programming a little bit more after working in a retro console. Or if you're an old fart like me, you might get nostalgic for the way that things used to be. Um, so as I mentioned earlier on, it is available also on the App Store. So if you have an iPhone or an iPad, you can actually create games on the go. And that's really kind of cool, I got to admit. So um, and this is also completely free. You'll notice it offers in-app purchases, but those in-app purchases are simply donations to help support the author. So that's a really cool project, completely free. And if you happen to have an i um, an i device of some form, you can do this on the go, which is also quite cool. Um, now the big thing here is we've got a really good manual. This actually ships with it. You just download like a megabytes worth of files. You zip them out, and this is inside. We'll look at that folder in just a second. But the key thing I want to look at right here is the specifications of the hardware we are dealing with. So there is a ROM, which is 32 kilobytes for graphics, music, and any binary data. Basic with a max of uh, 16. 103, sorry, 16,384 tokens or words, um, 160 by 128 pixel screens, refreshing at 60 hertz, uh, two background layers, tile-based and scrollable, 64 sprites max, 32 by 32 pixels, eight dynamic six-bit palettes, four colors apiece for each of those palettes, four voices uh, for audio, uh, input via two controllers with D-pad and two mouse buttons plus pause, an optional keyboard and touchscreen mouse interface. We'll get back to the instructions in just a second, but let's head on over and take a look at it. So here we are. This is the low-res NX. You'd basically un unzip this. The manual that we're looking at right here is available in manual. Just open that up and everything you need to know to learn how to use low res NX is there. Now, if you want to actually launch low res itself, okay, and sound warning, there are some bips and beeps and bops that are going to be made. So if you got your speakers cranked, uh, uncrank them. So it's very straightforward. Uh, here is your console, and then you probably want to start running stuff on it. And you see here, you've got a number of different applications here. Let's start with a very simple one. This is a, a text scroller, like you used to see at the beginning of a lot of games. It's basically just a graphic demo of the age. And it kind of gives you the idea of what kind of stuff low res uh, is capable of. Uh, we've got a slightly more advanced version here of Galaxy. Um, Use your arrow keys, and then the X button is your shoot. And it's a straightforward side-scrolling shooter game. Gives you an idea of the kind of games that you can create using this, and the uh, lack of skill that I have in these style of games. But that is another one of the examples. And obviously, you're getting the full basic source code for all of these things. I'll open one of them up in a second, Visual Studio Code. Now, you do not get an editing environment unless you're on mobile. Um, so if you're on your iPad or uh, iOS, there is that built-in editor. But in this case, what you're going to probably want to do on desktop is open up um, you know, Visual Studio Code or something like that. You can press Escape. It brings up this really simple development menu. It shows how many of the tokens you've used up, how much of your ROM you're using up. Um, you got the ability to dump out your RAM and so on, run it again, or we can just eject that disk completely. So we eject that out. And then you'll see here we have a bunch of other little things here. These are your tools. So we've got a sound composer. Again, audio warning. So when I put this in, there's going to be a bit. And then what you're doing here is basically recording sounds. And all of your output is saved out to disks. So remember, there's that ROM with all those various different spots available. That's where you dump things out. You can share them out. So you're kind of 
uh, you're gonna be accessing things via offsets using the um, either like a sprite you would tell it's offset or um, of disk commands. We'll see those in that help in just a second. So this is a pretty straightforward tool. This is what you would use to create music, for example. So a sequence of notes like so. And then when you like it, you play it. And there is your sound. And then you can um, store that out. Um, you can dump it to disk. No, that's is that store or stop? That's the stop. Okay, so you dump it out to disk right here. You can save it out this way. And then you can now use that music in your other creations. Uh, in a similar way, let me just do an escape out. We'll eject this disk out. We have a background designer, like so, uh, for creating obviously the backgrounds. Remember there are backgrounds and foreground sprites. We got different tools. So we got swap between your four different palettes that are available. And then you got a tool over here for editing the palettes. So this is what the constrained world used to be like. So you've got a lot less colors to work with. Uh, so on top of that, we've also got a character designer. I don't think I actually need to eject things. No, I don't. So here you see, this is for creating sprites. Uh, we can switch between 16 by 16. We can go full screen on that one. Uh, we can draw, we can flip them over. We can copy and paste. But here you basically select your palette and you draw your sprite and then you go to your next frame and the sprite again. Oh, so I got to clear it and then draw it. So clear and then let's go back here and we'll draw it. Okay, I don't have the work down here. Oh, there we go. So there you go, one sprite, two sprite. So if you got animations for your sprites, you can do them all here. You've got copy, cut and paste available. Clearing, we can flip things over in both directions. Uh, we can orbit things. We've got basic um, font controls there as well. It's a constrained system, but it does give you the ability to create your game sprites. Uh, and then, so we saw the sound, we saw the background and we saw the sprites. So yeah, basically that is all you need to, to successfully create a game using low res NX. And you can see the tools are uh, built into the system. And again, you use that common disk setup. Now, if you're interested in learning more about that, we'll go back to the manual. And here's where um, NX really shines is it's got a very, very comprehensive menu. So if, if you know the basics of basic, pun not intended, you'll find pretty thorough documentation going on here. You will find there's documentation on the character designer on the background designer, on the sound composer. Um, there's some breakdown on how you actually, so there's the basics of the basic language, pun again, not intended. But you see, it is a very straightforward, uh, very all capsy kind of way of doing things. Um, and then if we come down here far enough, because remember I told you that you could peek and poke? Well, peek and poke used to be the way that you, um, you did stuff. So basically there would be hardware registers and you wrote to a memory address and then that memory address did something. And, and this actually emulates that experience. So here, first off, we can see sprites. Here's how you can go ahead and draw things on the screen. Uh, so here's how you would draw, what is this going on here? 64 to draw the sprite. It's just moving a sprite around, I believe. Um, but you got a number of sprite controls, controls for your background. Bup, 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 bup. Here is your sound. Uh, so you would here's how you would play back the, the music that you uh, created. So you're going to play it again via offsets. Um, and then data for accessing things in disk, uh, reading and writing to disk. Uh, memory access. So here we go. So you get peek and poke. So if you want, you can peek out to this memory address and read the results or peek is just to write poke. No, poke is to write, peek is to, to read. Um, and then you'll notice down here, if we go to the very bottom of the documentation, which again is exceedingly thorough, um, we get into an actual breakdown of how the hardware works, how the CPU cycle works, uh, how a memory map works. So those are those specific areas you can read and write to using peek and poke. So um, yeah. It really kind of does recreate the whole um, experience that was the way that 8-bit microprogramming was back in the day. So yeah, that's kind of it, really. Um, again, this documentation is all included in the zip file. Just open up the uh, uh, manual.html. Uh, that was the low res NX executable is right here. And then you just start dumping your programs into it. As I mentioned, I would show you some code. We saw some in the example. But let's open up that Galaxy here. So why don't I have, all right, that's very annoying. So let's do Visual Studio Code. I don't think I have a basic syntax installed. I haven't used basic in quite a while. But as you see, the code, it, it's very straightforward. It's like this sprawling mess of stuff to do. Um, 
but it's also very easy to understand. And this kind of code is the stuff that you can go in there and play around with. So here you're also seeing like straight out data being dumped in binary format. And that's the way things used to be done. So um, yeah, that is essentially the whole idea behind low res Galaxy, um, sorry, low res NX. And this is the Galaxy example, as I mentioned earlier on. So the final thing to really talk about is this guy. So this is actually the um, the GitHub page for it. So if you want to start and work from the source code, it is available here. Once again, the scripted programming language is basic, but the, I actually don't know that it depends on SDL. So it's probably C or C++ code. Uh, it is under the LGPL3 license. Uh, let's see, core. Yeah, it's C code. So if you want to jump in and actually extend a virtual machine, this is also a nice starting point. And as you can see, 17 days ago, last month, 16 days ago, and so on. I don't know if there's another branch going on. Yeah, there's a development branch. And in development branch, you'll see uh, six days ago and so on. So this is actually very much an under development tool as well. And it has been for you know quite a while. It's a very mature product. So you can see it's been years in the making. Um, and I just kind of love this kind of stuff. I think it's really cool that people make this available. And I also think it's a very good experience, especially if you want to, you know, people always say, oh, learn C++, you'll understand the hardware better. And I've always thought that was a little insane, to be honest. But this, this kind of experience actually does kind of get you to understand the cause and effect relationship that our tools and our tool chains and our libraries have been sort of abstracting away from us for a very good reason, by the way. But if you really kind of want to understand how computers work, um, even though, you know, all of this stuff is taken care of for us. That's where these fantasy consoles really shine. So really, that is it. That is Low Res NX. Uh, let me know what you think of it in general and, and of uh, fantasy consoles as they are. Let me know what your favorite one is as well. And that's it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.